my people. And this is just a list that I comprise, and I don't want anybody to, you know, your list may be different. This is just what I got. I got, and it's in no order. Let me also say that, that the list is actually in no order. Education, housing, reparations, infrastructure, and business development, I feel are pretty, um, pretty important issues right now facing the black community. And I know, like I say, that there's no, um, I, I didn't put it in order. I know a lot of people put reparations number one, and it's just a list. So you can put reparations number one. You can put education number one. You can put housing. You can put business development. In terms of your opinion, Ray, what do you you, you consider to be you know one of the most pressing pressing issues facing Black people? If you had to, if you had to come up with a top five or even just a top three of of actual um uh, just issues or uh, problems, anything political, what what would you put as as your top five of what's actually facing us as a people right now that you feel that we we need to go ahead and address? Oh, that's a great question, man. You kind of shotgun me, so I'm gonna, I'm just coming off the top of the head. But if I had my top, this is just Ray, I would have to say education, because the thing is with our people, you can give them if you give them the money, but they don't know how to actually invest it wisely. Then most of us are just going to honestly just kind of fuck it away, to be honest. So I would just say more education when it comes to like how to actually invest in stocks and real estate and all this other stuff. Obviously, reparations will be you know, if not first, a close second, because obviously we are definitely owed the uh, the money that our ancestors didn't get. And for a third, let me see. Uh, you have to give me a minute to think about the third one, but definitely education, definitely reparations for the atrocities that our ancestors have faced. Um, I don't know. Just give me a second. Let me think about it. I'll get you that third one. No problem. DJ, what's going on? I see you up in the house. How's it? the reception? You good? Yeah, for sure. Work, working on another device, man. It's, it's actually even better when you use another device. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Reparations up. News Tata. What's going on, Ray? What's going on, Tata? What's up, Ebony? Nothing much, man. We, right now, we you know, we getting a discussion started. You know, Judge, um, you know, he always comes in a little bit later or whatever. So, but um, right now, we're just talking about five issues. I know me and you, we talked about it in the back channel. We talked about five issues, be it political or just, you know, just problematic or whatever. What, what we we deem as most important and whatnot. I know you and I, we had variations on what, on what we deem as the most important issues or issues that need addressing, fixing a uh, quick in the black community. Like I told Ray and everybody in the, in the space right now and in no particular order. So anybody listening, this is no order, education, housing, reparations, infrastructure, and uh business development. Um, I know, like I said, you and I, we kind of agreed and disagreed on some of those issues in particular in terms of um, what was, what was, the top one or whatever or what was the top five or whatever but just if you um if you got one or two offhand that you um you think of go ahead you can go ahead and let the, the space know real quick and like i said for those that's coming in judge joe brown we expect him to come in uh we we, we know judge he comes in at any time so we just gonna hold it down with conversation until the judge actually comes in y'all so the judge has been in but three spaces that we've had so we definitely um we know he'll be coming through so we're just gonna go ahead and hold it down till the judge comes through and then he will also, you know, give us his expertise on what he feels that are pressing issues facing the black community today. So this is going to be what the conversation is about. And those of y'all that's listening or whatever, when you guys feel a chance or want a chance to go ahead and come up and talk, by all means, go ahead and just request the mic and we will definitely let you come up here and talk. Ebony, you got your hand up, sister. Um, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, DJ, you had something you wanted to say before we kick it to Ebony real quick? Uh, you know, let the folks talk. You know, you know I'm up there working. Let's go. Okay, Ebony, you got it. So, so Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, how you doing, sister? Yeah, I got to get back on social because they keep kicking me off uh, Twitter as well. But anyway, um, I anti black. Think... Hey, hey, look at my look at my name, y'all. WPRs are anti black. White public institutions are anti black. Social, social. Right, social, everybody. But anyway, um, I think the most pressing right now. I know people probably most people won't agree, but right now it's housing. Because if you don't have housing, you're not going to think. I, I just put myself in that situation, you know, just thinking about it. If I don't have housing, I'm not going to think about, uh, I might be thinking about reparations, but all the other educators, I'm not thinking, I'm trying to get in, inside of a house. So I think the most pressing, especially I live in L.A., and it's just pathetic here. So housing is like, is number one. Because it's. I don't think it's just L.A. anymore. I think it's a whole lot of places all over the country where our people are just forgotten you know when it come to that even it seemed like our own people 
I know it just probably just seemed like it to me because it's important to me. I've had people in my family that was homeless. I was near homeless, so I know how important that is. So that's what I all I need to say. Thank you. No problem, sis. Appreciate having you, uh, Miss Great. Go ahead and unmute your mic, sister. Glad to have you back in the space as well. Repeat something, with sister. Ebony said. So that's about two hundred thousand homeless right here in North New Jersey, and I think about another ten thousand lost their EBT status. But go ahead, sister. Upgrade. Y'all, I'm going to step back because I had something else I want to talk about regarding the Maryland governor, but this housing discussion is more important. So I'll step back and I'll save it for another time. Thank you. Oh, you know, sister, like I say, right now, we just got the dialogue going and whatnot. This is going to be an issue tonight. But, um, you know, um, if you want to go ahead and, and chime in and let us know real quick, we just trying to um, kill some time also to the judge comes in and we're just talking about we're going to and it, it's not just housing. It's just, you know, the five five important black issues in this political cycle that we're thinking about in terms of what we need to go ahead and, uh, you know, try to push and whatnot, what what's important, what we need to go ahead and um, have politicians talk about on our behalf, what what we as black people, you know, really, really need at this point right now. And like I say, I just I mentioned education, housing, reparations, infrastructure, business development. But um, like I say, feel free if you if you want to sit back for right now, that's cool. If you want to add something in, that's fine as well. If you want to tell us about what actually um what transpired up in Maryland, you can go ahead too, because you know this is news. So this is a news space as well. So news, culture, uh, lifestyle. We try to go ahead and put everything in there. So if it's something that that you deem important or whatever, we can go ahead and, and, and hear it real quick. Okay, thanks, brother. Okay, I get it now. Listen, y'all, I need your help. <laughs> Wes Moore is running for governor of Maryland right now. Please. I will add it to the Jumbotron. Please go to his page, okay? And start holding him accountable. I am begging all of you. And in the meantime, you know, we I've got less than, what, a month and a half until election day. I'm trying to figure something out. Um, and I'll be working on it this weekend to try to get FBA in Maryland to help me coordinate holding him accountable and going to some events. But I'm begging all of you. He, first of all, he's half FBA. Um Go to his page, and you will see he has catered to everybody. Hey, what's his name again, sir? So or post it to the Jumbotron. Post it to the Jumbotron. Uh, let me. Uh, I will do that now. It's Wes Moore. I will do that now. Hey, he hey, has, real quick. Is that the same guy Marcel and Tariq was battling on a Fox show? That I don't know, honestly, because I've just okay, started, okay. I've started getting on his ass just about a month ago. Um so I don't know. And I'll look into that. I'm, I'm, th I'm trying to, I'm scrambling to try to catch up and I've been, you know, on his page for the past few days and I'll get, I'll get better at articulating this, this weekend. Once I'm done with work this week, I promise. And I'll start communicating with, I already sent you a DM news toter. Um, but I'll, I'll be better and more informed in the next few days. I just need time to catch up. Long story short, the Republican Republican candidate, showed up at an HBCU event at Morgan State University two days ago, and Wes Moore canceled because he wanted to appear on the, on MSNBC. Um, but that's just one of many things. He's catered to Jews, Mediterraneans, Latinos, illegal immigrants, legal immigrants. Go to, Please, y'all, go to his page. I promise I'll post it to the Jumbotron when I'm done talking. Um, we, got, we just have to hold him accountable because I, I need you all to understand, I, I live in a very blue, progressive county. And although right now Governor Hogan is Republican, we are we're in trouble now because since since Governor Hogan was elected over the past four years, we have been inundated with legal and illegal immigrants. And I'm, I'm fearful that Maryland is about to turn blue statewide. I'm in a sanctuary county. I personally know black people who are not benefiting from government benefits while legal and illegal immigrants are. I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to land my plane. Let me, let me add his page to the Jumbotron, and I'm asking you all just to spend a few minutes on there holding him accountable, and News Toner, excuse me, News Toter, I'll get with you on the back channels. Thanks, everybody. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we got Judge Joe in the house right now, everybody, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm trying to invite him to speak. Um, so, Judge, if you get a chance, go ahead and accept it, because I, I gave you the invite to speak, so we'll be waiting on once the judge um, actually um takes that invite uh because you know how these janky these twitter spaces be so i don't know what's going on ray uh dj see if you guys can invite uh yeah, judge joe 
Yeah, we're about to go through. Sometimes, you know, it's just uh, a delay thing. You know, when he, when, he'll see it when he's ready, though, obviously. Okay. Judge, I see that you just got invited as a speaker. How you doing tonight, Judge? Let's give it a minute because, you know, sometimes we have these delays and whatnot. So we have the Honorable Judge Joe Brown in the house. So I, we're definitely glad to have uh, be blessed by his presence. So, Judge, whenever you can hear me, whatever, you can just go ahead and uh, let me know um, how's your audio and everything else like that. So we definitely um, definitely want to chop it up with you tonight and appreciate you stopping by. I know you're a very busy man. So, uh, also, the judge is running for mayor for Memphis, in case you guys don't know, in 2023. So, we definitely uh, we definitely throw our support behind Judge Joe Brown and that as well, too. So, Judge, whenever you um, whenever your, your, your sound or whatever comes, let us know so we can go ahead and um, get you uh, caught up on the conversation and, and exactly what we're talking about tonight. Like I said, we're talking about uh, five important black issues going on in the actual black community in terms of political uh, in terms of the actual political process that's coming we're talking about I, I pick five education housing infrastructure reparations business development but I definitely like to hear your opinion on what you consider that the five most important pressing issues that we as black Americans need to focus on like so whenever you want to speak on one of them we can go ahead and we can build a conversation around that okay well my mic is on I'm glad everybody is doing okay well I hope you are. And that's JJB23, Judge Joe Brown for Mayor of Memphis, Tennessee in 2023. Send Brown downtown and take back your town. That's the slogan, JJB23. Now, I'd, I'd like your selection of categories. Uh, I just have this remark uh, to say about reparations about the only way we'd get it would be through an Appropriations and Enablement Act uh, that survived Congress, uh, a presidential signature or veto, which would have to be overcome, and an attack that would wind up in the Supreme Court. That said, when I have uh, an opportunity to see a lottery that's got a big pot in it, I will buy sometimes uh, quite a few tickets because it's worth the investment. But though I'd like to win the lottery, I doubt seriously we'll get reparations anytime soon because it's not new. This is the third time in my life that it's been a big issue. My parents talked about it. It came up several times in theirs and the grandparents uh, it came up a lot in theirs, including at least one who was alive when General Sherman signed that 40 acres and a mule edict, uh, January 16, January 14, 1865, and we got 40 acres of confiscated rebel land and one army mule. That was approved by his uh, superior, General Grant, President Lincoln, and the Republican House and Senate passed monies. But when Lincoln got assassinated and the program had been in operation for six months, Democratic uh, Vice President Johnson from the state of Tennessee, who was president then, he issued an executive order revoking it because the South at that point was still a military district and his commander in chief, he could do that. So it never got back off its feet again. However, the rest of the issues are important. I think education and or vocational training is very important because right now we've got a severe lack across the board in both of those two categories particularly in our community. And there's this big thing in place of the ordinary worker being made obsolete by industrial technology and communalization in the United States being the only industrialized country in the world that doesn't have a plan to rectify that. So we have the schoolhouse, jailhouse pipeline because we do not have a job market sufficiently large to absorb 
a lot of the youth who are becoming adults. So we warehouse uh, the surplus and we put them in jails and penitentiaries. That's like any kind of commodity, wheat, corn, cotton, soy, beef, pork, poultry. When you've got a glut, you store the surplus. In our case, it would be a jail cell instead of a grain silo. You subsidize the would-be producer, and instead of paying the farmer so much to grow something else or let the land grow lie fallow instead of growing, say, soy, well, we've got government checks. And the cutting back of production is all of the ignorance and stupidity that we force on the youth and ourselves, so... The young drop out, bang out, drug out, get knocked up too early, too often, develop inappropriate attitudes, outlooks, worldviews, the wrong way of carrying themselves. Uh, they are insufficiently prepared academically and vocationally, and they create chaos where they live so the neighborhoods that are impacted cannot engage effectively in cohesive political activity and engage in self-help. And once they get that felony, they really get badly uh, behind the eight ball. And this thing about they want free labor in the penitentiaries, no, they don't. They want no labor at all, but they do pe put people to work. That's behind that thing idle minds mischief makes. Uh, idle minds mischief make. Well, idle minds make mischief, so you want them to have something do so they don't create any more hell while they're locked up in this typical. Now, we've got to break that paradigm, and in order to break that paradigm, we have to exercise our franchises, meaning voting franchises, effectively and wisely, and you can't do that if you act like you're a slave on somebody's plantation. See, we don't get anything these days because black folk will always vote for the Democratic Party, no matter what the Democratic Party does not do for us, and we'll always vote against the Republicans, no matter what they might try to do for us, so nobody has an incentive to do a damn thing for us. So we're stuck behind uh, a pile of excrement that we have uh, put in our own way. So we have to do something about that because every other ethnic group in America and in this country's history has frequently swapped sides or interchanges based on who's giving them the best deal. And we're getting no deal. And it does not behoove a sensible people to be all tied up in somebody's personality because unless you know the individual personally, you don't know what they're really about because their public image is very seldom match the reality. So with that said, I guess I'll pass the mic. I heard some before I got in, but yeah, okay. Yes, sir. And, and basically, it, it's, it's just like I said, there, we're just talking about five um, important issues or what we consider the five most important issues. Like that's just my list, but you know, whatever that, whatever you feel are the five most important. And we're going to go ahead and cause I see we got a couple hands up, but whatever you feel the five oh, pressing. I just I'm sorry. Want to add one little thing in here. Home training. We need to act like we've got some. And some of the things I've seen are just absolutely ridiculous. And one of the problems is our homes are not what they used to be 50 years ago. We can do something about that if we start off publicly and stop fostering this public image of depravity, irresponsibility, lack of cooth, lack of mannerability, lack of common sense and stop glorifying dysfunction. We need to start saying some things are uncool and not to be done and ridiculing the hell out of those who keep doing them. And we need to start using shame and personal embarrassment some more. Those are good things. Forget what these leftist idiots want to say or the, well, anyway, I won't go there tonight. I'll oh, really? ask Mike. 
<laughs> well, we definitely, we definitely want to hear you go in tonight. That's why I always love having you in this space. Uh, we're so glad, like I say, once again, it's, I think it's been about two, three months at least since we had you in the space. So it's glad to actually, I'm glad to actually have you back in here so you can, uh, put, you can show us or uh, give us a little bit of wisdom and whatnot. So I definitely, like I said, I always love having you come up in this space and just hearing you go in and, and you know, just responding to it everything that you say um your cousin ray he's one of the co-hosts so i know he had his hand up he may have a question that he hey, want to ask you go ahead what's going on cuz how you doing tonight all right son how are you i'm good i'm good i just wanted to ask you about a couple of things too i saw an interesting post that said that why haven't we the descendants of the enslaved blacks in the united states why have we never thought of pursuing posthumous impeachment charges against Andrew Johnson for what he did. I want to uh, just, first of all, get your thoughts on that. And well, first what? off, that precedent was not set until very recently when the Democratic Control House, excuse me, issued its second set of articles of impeachment against former President Trump. And uh, before that, nobody would have considered it. Now, posthumous articles against Johnson, it's nice, but America does not have a judicial process where you can dig up dead bodies and prosecute them. As a matter of fact, what happens is that in America, there is this interesting term, it call, it's called the matter abates by death. You even have that in criminal cases. Your Honor, the state has to announce that it must uh, advise the court that this matter should abate by death. The defendant is now deceased. Somebody killed him or he died. So we don't really go into the thing of digging up a dead body to prosecute. That has happened in some cultures around the world throughout history, but we don't do it here. Now, posthumously pardoning somebody, that's another thing that clears up a reputation or an onus or something, a negative that may impact people still alive because of their biological or cultural or social or familial relations with someone. But it's a nice thought. He certainly wouldn't hurt his being a person <laughs> to go after. But you know they did go after him, and that was the first president they tried to impeach, but it was unsuccessful. But good try, cuz. Hey, it, it was worth asking. And um, before you came into space, I was obviously not talking about issues, you know, and important to black issues or important black issues. So I think two that need to be added in, and I'm going to get ready to hear my mic on immigration. That, that's definitely one I think needs to be definitely put on because it seems like more and more there's just been an influx of, of immigrants coming to our country, and we need to put a cap on that. And the second thing will be politics. I don't know if that was mentioned, but it seems like we've gotten caught up with just having black faces as opposed to having black people that are actually going to be there to push the policies that we want. And I'm going to land on there. And news, if you need me to drop down, you can bring the judge up as a co-host because, you know, if, if you need to, just let me know. I know, you well, could. You know. Brother, because stay, we like you. All right. But anyway, the immigration thing is not good for us. It's wiping out entry-level jobs. And I think it's a bloody cop out that some people are trying to push that, that we put in place to advance our interest. See, we've got people in office who do not represent us. They rely on us to put them in office and then they act as not so secret surrogates of other people who are really the ones behind them. And we've got to call them to account. I mean, the entire Black Caucus thing is a joke. It's like when's the last time they did a damn thing for Black folk, even though they like to sneak an inference in that they are. But if you read some of the bills that they have supported, I fail to see anything that we get out of them. Like the so-called anti-lynch bill has absolutely nothing to do with lynching. 
calling it after Emmett Till is blasphemous because as Emmett Till's mother, as Emmett Till's biographer says, and then everybody hooked up with the family says that wasn't even a lynching, that was a murder by two people. Now, the way it is right now, they added something to the American legal lexicon, and that is discrimination based on or harm done based on someone's sexual orientation. That's the first time that's in American law, even though it may be in certain states' uh, codes. But the categories of people that are protected from lynching are based on religion, based on sexual orientation, and based on Nothing else, really, that is a firm category. But it doesn't even require killing. And it doesn't require mob anymore. It can be one person. It says lynching can be based on killing, kidnapping, or beating. And under the law, the way they wrote it, let's say that some guy just broke up with his girlfriend or his wife feeling down and he's in a bar and he's drinking and he sees somebody in a tight skirt with big breast and fixed up, fancied up and he gets to dancing with her and they get to kissing on the dance floor and then all of a sudden he notices that this what he thought was a woman is getting a hard on and he drops back and busted in the mouth or in the jaw knocks out a tooth or bloodies a lip. That is now federal lynching. And see, we don't need that turned uh, into another avenue to impact minority, meaning black communities. And that's exactly what will happen. So that was pushed off as the Emmett Till anti-lynch bill, but you see, that had also been pushed as the anti-lynch bill after Juicy Jesse up in Chicago pulled off that fake lynching stunt. And that was after he met with certain people uh, who were at that point campaigning for high office and who right after this fake incident happened, took a bill that Conyers had introduced back in 1996 that had been sitting tabled ever since and tried to make it the anti-lynch bill and then they changed it to the Emmett Till anti-lynch bill and they got it passed and it doesn't do a damn thing for black people. But you see, that's how they wrote. So we need to hold them accountable. But anyway, I've talked enough. I passed the mic. No problem, Rivera. And then Kid Gravity, Rivera, go ahead and unmute your mic. Yeah, give it a minute for uh, Rivera. You know he'd be having problems with his phone or whatever. Yeah, I know sometimes it's a, it's a delay. I'm, are, you here? are you here, Rivera? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you had a question that you wanted to ask the judge? Yeah, I was going to wait. That's why I put my hand down. I'm driving. I do have oh, to okay. Wait. No problem. Ted Gravity, go ahead and unmute your mic. Good evening, Judge. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I just had a question about education. Um, you brought up recertifying schools. Um, how do you propose we go about doing that legislatively? Because I, I um, that's like one of the main things I try to focus on my YouTube channel. I like to see like middle schools and high schools recertified, so at least the next generation they can learn like the STEM fields early, and you know maybe even get the labor jobs like construction and all that. Get that back in there like it used to be in the seventies. So how would we try to get that accomplished? You have a board of education. The members of the board of education are elected. Get on the job when it comes to getting the right people elected to those boards who become people who listen to what their constituents are talking about. So 
that's step one, engage in the political process. Uh, Judge, let me ask you a question, because one of the things I talked about was infrastructure as well. And we, we, we've been hearing for 20 some odd years that the infrastructure of America is crumbling. Also, we see um, in some of these these predominantly black areas like Jackson, Mississippi and stuff, the crisis that's going on with the uh, the water and everything else like that. How high of a priority should that be in, for black Americans, the actual crumbling infrastructure and how it's, it's affecting us as black Americans as well? I'm glad you asked that question. Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the streets are horrible. Potholes everywhere. Memphis light, gas, and water is always breaking down, and people are going four, five, eight, nine, fourteen, fifteen days without power or water. And to find out why, you have only to see what's going on behind the scenes. For example, the Memphis City Council, which is majority black has agreed to help out a hotel chain by advancing $242 million with the first interest payment due in 10 years if the company doesn't sell or otherwise encumber the property. And that's supposed to be accompanied by a fee of $1 a year to the city and perhaps 4% of any net generated, which is always zeroed out. That's $242 million. Down where we have a bus barn, the city has agreed to sell 25 acres of downtown property to a developer for $600,000 only, with that not to be paid for 10 years, with a full financing of $210 million. That's $210 million that's coming out of the tax coffers immediately. And what's supposed to happen is 28 luxury units are to be put on these 25 acres and some luxury shops that are already operating or, let's say, studio facilities for the benefit of the 28 luxury uh, units will be allowed in there. Now, that's doing nothing for the people, but right there, you're at a half billion dollars. It could be put into the infrastructure and the development of the place, let alone wasting of bond issues for financing something that a hundred people might get something out of. So you see these things go on over and over and over again in the cities, particularly where we have control, because if you talk to our representatives, they tell you, look, it's our turn to get the gravy. This has been, no, it's not your turn to rip the people off. It's your turn to deliver good government and stop wasting all this money since spending it in places that don't help out the people. There is somebody... I won't mention his name, but he's one of my opponents. He set up a corporation, supposedly a nonprofit corporation to operate city parks. He and another Confederate, a black woman, decided to introduce a binding resolution to sell two items of property, a park where in Nathan Bedford Forest statue was on prominent display right in the middle of a hospital complex on a main street leading to downtown and get rid of a park on the bluff uh, where the Mississippi flows right by next to a museum, very prime property where Jeff Davis's statue was located. Okay, uh, it was sold to them on another resolution they got passed to sell it to the corporation founded by one of the members of the county commission without bid for just $2,500 for all of these acres right in the middle of the hospital complex, $2,500 for the acreage on the bluff prime property right next to the metal museum, if you know Memphis. And now this corporation is being offered anywhere from 17 to $28 million for what they got for $5,000, no bid. Meanwhile, one of them, the woman, she has a half-brother who was paid $5,000 a month to store these two statues in a facility that he paid $96 a month for 
for three and a half years. Now, see, that's where the money's going. So we need to start holding the people that we elect accountable. All right. Why don't we have more firm control over the police in areas that are predominantly black or have a high black population? Well, that's because the people we elect don't give a damn. They don't do anything about it because they're too busy trying to feed their master's projects to deal with the hard knocks and uh, that are going along with trying to straighten things out. And they don't know how. They're too ignorant in the process of government, but they do know how to sit there and take bribes under the table or long-term payouts. So we don't need any more people who get rich by holding public office at the expense of the people that put them in office. We need people who are there for the cause of trying to help out their people. Now, that's something we can do that will straighten things out. Go find out what your elected representatives are doing. We've got a situation here in Memphis again. We've got the 9th Congressional District. It's 92% black. And they've got a gay, older Jewish guy who has been in there for 16 years and his net claim to fame is introducing a binding resolution that requires the congressional cafeteria to use only paper straws. We have black folk got not a damn thing out of it, but every little shyster businessman on the side who is not a little businessman, but is a big businessman has gotten everything they want in the small businessmen and the middle class, black and white, have gotten absolutely nothing. But you see, this kind of thing goes on and on and on. So if we want something, we have to act like an in demand. We just had a big election, 430 to 50 people on the ballot. You were electing everything from judges on. And a lot of people voted for judges because they saw their picture or the little blurb on a sample ballot that somebody got paid good money to put together and hand it out to them on the way to the poll. And they got a few good people. They got rid of some very bad people, but they got some losers in the mix that they didn't even know anything about or thought they was somebody else. So we have to pay attention. Stop dealing with basketball, baseball, football, uh, what is that sick thing, P Valley and the housewives? We have to pay attention to our lives. See, and if you want good government, you have to earn it. Because this country is notorious for an old axiom. The people get the, the representation they deserve. And if your representation isn't worth a damn, you aren't either. So... Wise up, buck up, get up, stand up, and do what you have to do, and get yourself in a position of deserving something, earn it, and get it. It's there for the taking. Judge, real quick, the situation that's going on in Jackson, um, and your estimation, because I, I see that they did, uh, we was talking about it yesterday, that they, um, that they have a funding bill, $40 billion, $12 billion is going to be going to Ukraine. And I believe something like two to three billion dollars would actually fix the water crisis down there in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, why can't they get the uh, federal funds to go ahead and, and actually fix the actual issue down there in Jackson, in, in, in your opinion? Because your president is trying to get a 128 count indictment against him dismissed. See, we have a thing called Article One, Section Eight of the Constitution. that says the government shall enforce the law of nations. We've got another thing, Article 6 to the Constitution, that says part of the supreme law of the land are those treaties that have been ratified by the Senate. We now have Article 2, Section 4, that says the president, vice president, may be impeached and if convicted, removed from office for treason, bribery, and crimes in office. We have the 12th Amendment that says if you are impeached, you can never again hold office. And we've got a little thing in there where they went after Trump after he was no longer in office. Well, when Biden was vice president, 
What seems to have gone on is very deplorable, and he and his son basically extorted Ukraine into dropping charges against Sonny Boy, Crackhead, Hunter. Now, that... We have the situation where an indictment was revealed by the Ukraine Supreme Court a week of the 2020 November election, and it listed with specificity charges of bribery, extortion, attempting to solicit perjury, treason, and a number of other crimes. So you notice Biden doesn't go to Ukraine. He sends Kamala Harris him off. Well, he can't go because he's subject to arrest. One of the treaties we have with Ukraine and some other nations uh, known as Interpol requires that we assist in the apprehension, detention, and extradition of criminal elements. So Biden is indicted by someone that we have a treaty agreement with. And in addition, Ukraine is trying to escape some other things. They produce some of the highest numbers of volunteers for the Gestapo and for German occupation troops who rounded up Jews during World War II and sent them to prison camps for extermination along with gypsies and people who were part of the resistance. And because they were part of the Soviet Union after the war was over, nobody went after them for war crimes or crimes against humanity, and they haven't paid for that. One of the things that these clowns are not letting us know about is the horrible treatment that African descendants get in Ukraine. There are three or four generations of Africans there. Ukraine used to be a staunch ally, well, not ally, part of the Soviet Union, and it was its southernmost uh, republic. So a lot of Africans and then their children, grandchildren and great grandchildren are now in the Ukraine and they're treated like crap. And they are part of the resistance. So we don't even hear about that. But there are all kinds of things over there that are going on. And see, because they set that precedent of going after Trump the second time, they can go after Biden and they've got him where he's sitting up in front of a C-SPAN gathering, and he's saying, he's laughing about it, I guess I'm guilty of bribery. I told them two things. This $1 billion direct loan was not going to go through if they didn't back that guy off of my son's case, and we've got $14 billion in loan guarantees that's going to die too if they don't. That's extortion and bribery. And, yeah, you can go after him. And then that would put somebody in a real hellified position if uh, you get this midterm thing going like it looks. And uh, this is the worst it's ever been is coming up into the midterms. And predictably, there ought to be a bloodletting that comes out of it. So the Democrats will lose the House. They can easily return articles of impeachment against Biden for what he did as a vice president, and it's provable. And there is that laptop. And by the way, there's going to be an interesting special on television about that laptop and what's in it and uh, what ordinary people think ought to happen as a result of that. But stay tuned for that investigation. But you're likely to get Biden impeached and sent over to a majority Republican Senate and convicted. And then you're going to have Kamala Harris as as president of the United States and Nancy Pelosi as vice president. And that's nothing but an ultimate disaster for anybody, including their own party. So it's going to be interesting. But those are things that are in the background, which has a great deal to do with why Ukraine is getting that money that ought to be spent right here in America where people need it worse.
Yes, sir. Absolutely. Ray, I see you got your hand up. Did you want to ask the judge something? Hey, and, and no. DJ, DJ, real quick, check your um your DM real quick. No, you actually uh, took my talking point. I was going to ask you what were your thoughts on Ukraine. So he actually took my uh, my talking point. <laughs> Judge, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, what's your your um your opinion on the housing crisis right now? The actual skyrocket rent and everything that's taking a place uh, nationwide. How how does how do you feel about um the impact that's having on Black Americans as well? Well, it depends on which Black American. You know, a lot of black Americans got into the landlord business. And some of them I know are suffering because of the hiatus uh, period that went on relative to collecting rents. So they don't want to be homeless and lose the properties that they've spent a lot of time and money acquiring. And uh, I can see that. So the rents are going up, but again, if you're going to have some kind of subsidy, you ought to work something out with the billions of dollars that you're shipping over to somebody that's not even close to us, that we have no interest in preserving. So while we whoopee, what kind of senseless stupidity is going on up there in D.C. that doesn't match the reality that you and I and everybody else have to deal with on a daily basis? Now... I think something else is going on, too. I'm looking around. I just left Newark this weekend, New Jersey, and was through New York on a project I was doing. And I saw, like I've seen in Memphis and other cities, all of these for hire signs. There are a lot of jobs, but they can't get them filled. And you're bringing in a lot of people across this border down south who are quite willing to take those entry-level jobs. And when they get the entry-level jobs together, they'll move up and more will come in to take the entry-level jobs while people are moving up, and that will be knocking people off the shelves they get to when they get to moving up, and that's us. So we need to do something about getting somebody in place that will protect those jobs that our folk ought to have and other Americans ought to have because times are hard. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, original, I see you up here. Did you had a did you have a question that you wanted to ask Judge Joe Brown? You there, original? Okay, original. Maybe having some issues. Original, if your um, if your if your communication gets straightened out. Go ahead and um, if you want to ask the judge something, just let us know. Also, judge, I wanted to ask you um about business development in terms of the um black community and whatnot. We see a lot of um, if you look at the news, sometimes you see it seems that a lot of black women get um grants and there are a lot of programs now and stuff. And you see some of these major corporations um offering you know incentives for black women to start business and actual programs specialized programs for black women how do you feel about that or do you feel like black men are being left out of some of these um these programs as well and how do you think as a people we can um we can create more black um not only black business but black industry is so important as well too well here's an observation i know we've got a growth in the number of girl gorillas out there who don't know how to act but for the most part, the drive-bys and the criminality stems from black males. But let's look at the plight of the black male. Now, nationally, just 28% of the high school graduates for the last 20 years have been male. Just 28%. Just 32% of the college undergraduates at public universities and colleges have been male. And just 36% of the grad students in public universities and colleges have been male. And just 44% of the workforce has been male. Now, that's for the entire ethnic 
soup of the country. Now, when you break it down to this black folk, it's worse than that. So we have a situation where just 36% of the black folk who work are male. So what has happened to the boys? And over the last 50 years, I can remember, hell, I was practicing law when it first happened. The first take your daughter to work week. In the entire half century, there has not been one take your son to work week. But every week and for 50 years, we've had to take your daughter to work week. We've got all of these reach out programs to black women and I understand what's going on, but you better watch out for these boys. They're the ones that'll stick you up, rob you, rape you, kill you. So we need to start making men of these boys. But publicly and socially, uh, what we're doing is acculturating and socializing the boys to be not men. We are not teaching them duty, honor, responsibility, accountability, dependability, making where they are a better, safer, more secure place filled with economic prosperity, sense of purpose, morality, and ethics. We're causing them to be dysfunctional. We have entertainments that we just can't seem to resist, where there is a glorification of being a pimp, hole, drug dealer, robber, thief, um, gangster, burglar, burglar, murderer, or some kind of off-brand idiot that tears down his or her community. We've got to do something about that. We cannot continue to flock to theaters to see stuff that's dysfunctional just so we can talk about it at a cocktail party. Uh, we have to do the homework. We have to put the home training in these children and children are just like any other mammal children, whether you have people puppies or pooch puppies. If you don't train the pup, it grows up to be something that is a mess. And I am not seeing well-trained children. And for 50, more than 50 years, I started off as a playground director at one of the worst playgrounds in the L.A. school system. It was known as Trinity Avenue Elementary School. I've been a school teacher. I've taught college. I've been an adjunct professor. I dealt with being a scoutmaster for 15 years and getting boys who had no daddies manned up so they did something in life. And over the test of time, I seem to have been successful. I took felons who were going the wrong way, turned them around so they became men. And they contributed to where they live and lived instead of tearing the place down. There are ways that work. They worked for thousands of years. The Roman legions did it. The Marine Corps does it. Uh, we used to do it as a society, trying to make boys into men. And now it seems like that's against everybody's principle. So we have to start going back to that. It is most uncool to do what we've been doing. So let's take some of this blame on our own shoulders and start doing something about it. Uh, Judge, let me ask you a quick question. Um, when you hear the term environmental racism, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Lightweight background noise. I mean, look, I'm where I am age-wise. Probably the oldest somebody on here. But I can remember when I was a child, uh, we got caught out too near sundown town at the wrong time. Some rednecks decided to shoot at the car my mother, father, and myself were in. My mother had handed me this bottle of Coca-Cola. It was a small eight-ounce bottle. In. And she wanted to get something out of the glove compartment. They took a shot at the car. They missed. They took another shot. They were trying to hit my father. They didn't even see me. The bullet shattered the Coca-Cola bottle on my knee and went out the other side of the car. I'm worried about my mother being pissed because I spilled her Coca-Cola. She was cool. She said, son, I said, baby, don't don't panic. I said, I'm not panicking. I just said, but hey, I do. And I she said, no, it's not your fault. So they hit the car three times. Fortunately, none of the people in the car, all right? 
I've been through that colored only restroom, uh, colored only water fountain. Even out in Los Angeles, they said we do not rent the colored in certain places. Places. I've been through that as a young adult riding in a car two blocks from the Disneyland parking lot in Anaheim. We're lost trying to find something. We're in a state vehicle, four of us, employed by the state of California, University of California. Blue, red lights went on. Gentlemen, you seem to be lost. Yes, sir. Well, what can you, what are you looking for? You tell them, oh, I know you must be from the university. Well, it's in an alley. That's why you can't find it. He gave us directions. He said, now it's winter and it's about 440. It's going to be dark by 530. If you're still here by 530, it won't be sir anymore. It'll be nigger. You understand? Uh, yeah. Okay. Went through that whole militant, uh, militant thing. I was grown and out of high school when uh, they had that Watts uprising in August 1965. See, I know what time that is. And what you guys deal with right now ain't shit. I mean, it's still there. But you support some of the worst bastions of racism in the country. You keep spending all your money going to box office in Hollywood and... I was in my 50s when they discovered me for that. I, I, I was in my 50s when they discovered me for that show I had for 15 years. And I'd have to say this, some of the worst racism I ever ran into in my life was in the 21st century in Hollywood, California. You just have no idea where it is their conscious and deliberate and intentional objective to destroy black male, well, excuse me, black masculinity. They hate black men, straight black men. And you, we patronize the damn thing. And many a time they have been flat broke busted and we bailed them out. The most recent time was Black Panther. Walt Disney and ABC had a judgment against them for one and a half billion dollars total with the interest compounding. And they couldn't pay off any of that cash. They needed cash flow. So they put out the Black Panther that resulted in black men and women of the tribe trying to kill each other in the last scene. And we bailed them out. And they survived. And they're still spewing their poison. And we don't know any better. See, we get taken. But the stuff you have to deal with now, it's adversity. But we can kick it in the ass easy enough. We just need to stop whining about it and look at it as something like there's a lion, a tiger out there to eat you if you're unwary walking through the bush. But it can be dealt with. I would suggest that if you haven't done it for yourself, Bail yourself of the opportunity to do so. And if you have children, make damn sure that they sit down at the kitchen table and do their homework and you understand it better than them. Stay at least a chapter ahead so you can help them out. And I'll be damned if there's going to be a racist white man sitting on the other side of your table. And if you give the kids the foundation, it doesn't make any difference who the hell is in front of them, racist otherwise. If you build a character in them and tell them to stop being afraid of white folk, then they can deal with it and be full-fledged citizens like everybody else. Now, I mean, there are problems, but we can deal with it. I mean, hell, and, be, and get some balls, damn it. I was the judge. I had a James Earl Ray. Five of these folk tried to break in my house and kill me. We had a shootout. 30 shots were fired. Called the director of police up in the morning. He was a friend. He and another detective I used to represent came by. We found blood all over the place. We found out the dispatcher's recordation system had been turned off a half hour before that and 45 minutes after. Be brave, damn it. You can handle it. All kinds of crap goes on that you wouldn't even dream of, the real deal. 
And we're running around playing Philly Willie Little. Something or another's afraid of the damn shadow. Nobody's going to lynch you these days. If you got the police, yeah, one of them might gun you down if he's the wrong fool. But the chances of you getting gunned down now are much less than they used to be. I say that with all sincerity. We have to start getting some balls and acting like it. Absolutely. Uh, Secret, uh, Ray, uh, uh, you want to go ahead and ask a question real quick? I do, but I feel like it's going to start a little bit of a firestorm, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. <clears throat> what can, because this obviously ties in with, you know, all black people. What can we do? Because, let me see how I can say this. What can we do to combat a lot of things that are coming from the left? Like, obviously, they're pushing a lot more of the LGBT things onto us, onto our children. I don't know if you know this, but in Chattanooga, Tennessee, because I know you're in Tennessee, they actually just had a Pride Day parade, and they had basically, you know, these drag queens that were opening their legs and letting the kids touch their crotch. I mean, this is all over the news. I just wanted to see just what we could do, because if we so much as speak out against it, you know, they're coming for our jobs. They're coming for, you know, everything well, we worked hard for. And we're just trying to honestly. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. You got to risk it all. I quit a job that paid me a minimum of $25 million a year without bonuses and percentage of the take. Because they tried to get me to support that. And I wouldn't. What you can do in the state of Tennessee is called open and notorious public lewdness. If you witnessed it. You can swear out a warrant. A group of people ought to do that. They ought to talk about what that does to children. That is felonious. So swear out some warrants and let the damn DA who got advantage of your votes deal with it. The district attorney. Yeah, you don't have to put up with that nonsense. That's sick. And it isn't that many of them. And when somebody starts trying to go against you on the job, there is still a thing called the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I used to work for them damn near 50 years ago. And you can still go complain about discrimination on the job based on race and now sexual orientation. You're straight. If somebody comes at you from the employee side. And by the way, once you make such a complaint, if they do one thing, you sneeze at you wrong, look cross-eyed at you, it becomes retaliatory. And that's actionable, too. You don't have to put up with this. In Knoxville, I've been through Knoxville, Chattanooga, all over this state. Do you see any sidewalks or crosswalks painted black, red, and green? But you see a lot of them painted rainbow here in Memphis, too. What the hell is that? And you want to tell me there are more of them in Tennessee than black folk? Uh-uh. They don't even constitute 2.5% of the of the population. And then, tell you something else. You're dealing with two different things. Gay folk, they got a right to do what they do. Get that freak on in the damn bedroom. That's their business. But you see, they've got a cult. It's called LGBTQIA+. And that cult is like a religion. And see, if you want to think of it properly as a religion, think of Buddhism, Confucianism. There's no God for those things. But they are religions because they're systems of philosophy. And these folk have a cult that they are trying to teach in school. You can't teach a religion in school. They're trying to have demonstrations in public buildings. You can't put a nativity scene in City Hall, but you can hang a rainbow flag from a federal building in D.C. that's 12 stories tall. You can paint the sidewalk rainbow color, the symbol. You have an American flag at every embassy and consulate in the world. You can't put a cross under it. You can't put a crescent and a star under it. You can't point a put a six-pointed Jewish star under it. You can't put the multi-arm symbol for Hinduism under it. You can't put Buddha under it, but you can put a damn rainbow under it. And as one of them explained to me, said, Judge, uh, 
all gay folk don't support LGBTQ. It's a cult. Just like all Christians didn't support Reverend Jim Jones and drinking Kool-Aid at large church picnics. Just like if you are Islamic, that does not mean you support Al-Qaeda and ISIS. You see, we're getting sold a bill of goods, and part of the problem is, is I don't want to be crude, but too many of our elected officials are into the 6B thing. Unbuilt, drop britches, drop boxes, bend over, spread butt cheeks, get boy bang. And they want to make it safe for them to do it so they don't have to worry about being tossed out of the closet they're in. Because of the LGBTQ thing, the Q thing stands for questioning and queer. And too many of them were questioning and bent over and did the 6B thing and they don't want it out. And then if they're women, I mean, it's like unbra, uh, drop bloomers, booty on the bench, knees bucked and beaver bust. And it ain't cool. We need to, these people need to let us know what they're about instead of being in these closets and trying to pass all this legislation for somebody that doesn't even look like them, just plays like them. Expose these people. Say, hey, we need to know why you're doing this. Is it because? <laughs> hey, man, you understand? You want to meet my oh, no, no, no. but damn, man. The rest of us don't like that kind of thing, man. So, hey, why are you messing with our children? I mean, you know what they're doing when they do this stuff with all these trannies looking like harlot madams and brothels. They, it's because human children are most receptive to women until they get a little over seven years old. So you got nasty looking something looks like mama down there reading to him but then see that puts a negative image of women in the kid's head and he's being read at to a, at the library from two three four and he gets to kindergarten and five they invite him into the schools six seven and eight and what's going on is like how many times have people got told if you don't go to church on Sunday, you're going nowhere else the rest of the week, or synagogue, or mosque, or temple. And young mothers take their children there so they can get converted to the religion. But they get these freak-looking fakes in there talking to these children more than these children in church. So by the time they're seven, eight years old, they have had this poison in their mind. And then people are telling them stuff uh, Watch what goes on in schools. That's where you really need to pay attention. And how much are they paying school teachers? We're in Tennessee, and a lot of places in Tennessee, school teachers start at just 28000 a year. If they've got more than a two-year education at a junior college with a, an associate degree, they might start at 32000 with no retirement benefits. So who the devil gets paid 32000 That's at the poverty level. So we aren't even putting... Look what's happening to these children. And we let it go. And they're recruiting. Not saying that an adult can do whatever the devil he wants to do. But they can't sign contracts. But you let these kids get in a position where they can agree to getting their dicks cut off at nine years old and turn into eunuchs. I mean, you send horses and puppies to the vet to get neutered, not people. What the hell is wrong with us? Oh, Judge, you going in the comments like people really laughing about those comments that you going in with. <laughs> not that I disagree, because I don't know what they're talking about with all this you talk about giving kids, giving boys pills and stuff and hormone pills and cutting their thing off and this and that. I I, I got lost with this stuff right here. I... And look, let me say this. Be careful. Doctor, careful. Several doctors I know, I've known since they've been children. They're pediatricians or general practitioners. Uh, we met up, drank a little beer, um, sat down there and talked stuff, and they brought out something to show me. Uh, this thing about what you're talking about, 
it was from the National Pediatric Association. And 95% of the practicing pediatricians say that stuff is garbage, it's wrong, and they violently disagree with it. So you got maybe 5% of the whole profession pushing that like it is the consensus of the profession that that sickness is in fact reality. And then they claim most of the people that push that something's wrong with them anyway. And that's in the medical profession. And we're supposed to buy that. You see this thing that Virgin Airlines did? Oh, they let the boys now wear dresses if they want to. Red dresses and high heels. Damn, if I'm getting on a plane with some dude walking in high heels, uh uh-uh. Want somebody that can perform. And then they get to wear badges with their pronouns on it. So, you know, what is it? Uh, we get bad English pronouns, you know, and somebody can switch and twitch in a, a skirt. Skittles and skirts, I, I think I tweeted. Uh, what is this? This is crazy. I mean, you want to get called some special pronoun? That's a damn business. I, I'm not going to butcher the English language. They is fine. Instead of she is fine, you know, we got enough problems right now with eubonics instead of learning English like everybody else in the world. So you want to make it worse? I told some kid, he wanted, what I am and some, I said, look, I don't even know you. Don't care to know you. And the only way I'd be able to deal with your pronoun and call you what you want, because I'm not going to remember it, is if you tattoo it on your forehead and then I look at you such a big damn fool, all you're going to do is be an it. Because as far as language is concerned, it's he, she, or it. So you pick the one. And I'm not even going to trouble to try and remember your pronoun because I don't think you're worth knowing by name. Now go away somewhere. And get sick on your own time. And let your mammy and whatever, if you know who your daddy is, worry about your crazy behind when you go crazy. It'll burn up all these psychiatric bills. <laughs> See, this shit is not normal. Okay, I wear glasses to read. If I had normal vision, I wouldn't need those glasses. A lot of people wear corrective lenses because their vision isn't normal 2020. Okay, we cope with it. But we're not trying to get everybody else in the world to wear glasses that make their visual acuity bad. Why in the devil are we supposed to accommodate somebody to make us abnormal like they are? Some people get born without a leg or an arm or can't see. That's not normal. You deal with accommodating them, but it's not normal. So when in the hell do we get this thing about somebody's got this freak thing in their head where they can't get into what's going on? Now, are we all grown on here? I'll I'll be candid about it. If you listen to me on radio or YouTube sometimes, you've heard me. What do you see when you see a human? Answer, a success, I'll be polite, a successful screw. Somebody had a successful screw, somebody got knocked up, somebody got nine months of displeasure and discomfort, and then something got birthed, and then something grew up, got raised, courted, had a successful screw, something else grew up and had a successful screw. So anytime you look at a human, you're looking at a successful screw. I'd use the F word if I was being basic about it. But these folk have taken themselves out of that loop. They don't look at what am I going to do for tomorrow for my children to make them healthy. And then remember, they claim they can't help it because they were born that way. So if they were born that way, why the devil did they go out and try out of their way trying to recruit? And plus, what is this like that sick puppy, Charlize Theron? She ought to be put in jail. What did she say? Oh, he said he wanted to be a boy when he was two. Hell, all kinds of boys said they wanted to be girls at two. 
who wanted to be a girl did too. And you say, get mama's shoes off of your feet, boy. Men don't do that. Boys don't do that. That's for girls. And the boy is trying to test you to see what is appropriate. He doesn't know. So if you say, uh-uh, then he says, I guess that's a uh-uh. You say, oh, you want to be a girl? Oh, I'm going to help you. Then he's going, oh, well, wow, you know, it's kind of strange, but I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. What the hell's wrong with us? I mean, what happened to... We used to run the dust. Hey, man, I won't say nothing, man. But, you know, I was over at your house the other night, man, when your daddy was at work and you was asleep, man. I hope you don't mind that I started a new baby brother on the way for you, man. Oh, man, I ain't got nothing to do with nothing, man. I don't want to say nothing about your mama, man. She's so big, man, she can't get in the bathtub with two drops of water. She can't get clean, man. That's why she stinks so bad. Nobody want none of your mama, man. See, we used to talk about each other for a hobby. Pass the time away. Uh, elementary school, junior high, and high school. What, what's happened with all these delicate people now? Can't take anything. You know, and ladies out there, why are you giving it up to these fools? Ain't got a job, can't get their stuff together, don't know how to treat you, don't know how to act right with themselves. I mean, basically what we're looking for is, you know, it's your job sometimes to put manhood in the boy's head, at least the idea. Spartan women used to tell their sons, come back with your shield on and do or die, boy, don't embarrass the family. What do we do? We braid their hair and put ribbons on them. And people come, up, oh, your daughter is so real. Well, he's a boy. It is. And don't even realize what you're doing. Toughen these boys up. They need to be raised hard. Boys are like soft iron. They need to be turned into steel. And you have to work at that. There's an art to it. And I remember 25 years ago, I used to run these counseling sessions for women who were single mothers with some boy 13 to 17 in the city school system. I'd let them start off all the time. They'd go launch into, man, ain't no good, honey. I hear you, honey. They ain't nothing but dog. Yeah, girlfriend, they ain't worth but one thing. And I'd let them go on, and then I'd stop. I said, now, obviously, you're here because you want your boys to grow up to be men. Am I right about that? Well, yeah, you right about that. What they got to do with anything? Well, how the devil are you going to raise your boys to be men if you don't know what they're supposed to be good for when they get grown? There you have it. Ladies, when you have boys, you need to put some manhood in them, or at least the idea of it. Put them in martial arts, karate, or something, where somebody that's running the thing that they can respect will give them some principles to guide them. Same thing with the girl. By the way, it doesn't hurt to have a guy around that's all right when there's a girl. So you need those guys to say, uh, baby, uh-uh, not bringing yourself back up in here at this time of night. You see where that clock, I'm going to move the clock around. You see what it says when it gets here, you're in here. Uh, that young man picked you up. Or don't you have him show up at this door again? Or, Daddy, could I have $50? Tamika and I are going to the mall. Maybe I just gave you 20 the other day. Daddy, please. Well, here's a hundred, baby. This don't bother me the rest of this weekend. Thank you, Daddy. Now, see, she'll grow up learning how to, having learned how to deal with men, instead of standing there like a fool with a hand on a hip and a head wagging, pointing the finger. Let me tell you what I'm going to make you do. See, that doesn't work. And guys, you need to learn how to work that boys and girls 1018 and B2. You ain't going to get much laid going in there and say, baby, drop your drawers. We going to do it. That ain't getting you nowhere. The women, it doesn't get you anywhere trying to do the counterpart to a guy. And by the way, guys, you ought to be deeply ashamed for white, black, brown, red, yellow in America. 25 and under, 
there are more boy virgins than there are girl virgins. The girls are getting laid, and the select few guys are getting the ass, but the rest of you ain't getting none. What's happening? And ladies, what are you doing? This used to be all about getting a husband and a wife and a family and raising children and having uh, an economic unit that would take you through life until somebody died or got shipped off or something happened. You know, now the divorce has got too easy and now nobody's even getting married. Don't even know anything about it. Judge, you know? one, one quick, um, we had a, we had a, um, a listener that wanted to ask you a question. Secret sister, you still there? Yes, I am. Hey, Judge. How, How you are doing? You? I'm um, fine. You, you probably, you, I don't know, you probably don't remember me, but I was over in the Kale sector when uh, Sylvia did your uh, interview. But um, anyway, I was trying to, um, it's, it's funny because everybody in here should now understand because I am the female you. I come in here and I tell them, when did men start feeling? Every man always say, I feel. I said, huh? My dad never felt. My dad did. My mom felt. I didn't understand, you know, all this feeling. It's too many feelings. And if you notice, men are more uh, feminine than the women. And the women are running around, oh, bitch this, bitch that, you a bitch ass nigga this, be your bitch. And I'm like, you know what? I'm for my black man, okay? Totally. I, I've, I've been fighting for them all my life. I'm for the black man. And I told them, I said, I have found a manifesto and I have found one, the taking down of the black man. And I've been trying to tell these, tell our family, our black family, as it was coming down the pike. And they don't want to listen. That's one thing they don't do. They don't listen because they say, oh, you're old and what you go through and what I go through. I'm just trying to teach you what I've already been through so you don't go through it again. But if that's what you want to do. But I noticed that all these black men are running around feeling shit. And I'm saying, where are the warriors? Now, in this whole thing, at my age, I done pulled up to three different places. And I have yet to see a lot of these quote unquote men pull up to anything. They have, uh, that we have some, some, what are, what are they, uh, news title, aren't they Mexicans or something messing with one of our sisters in California. And I feel like that shouldn't be the moment she said, you know, cause she's standing for our people. And the moment she said, they are bothering me, they're following me. They said they want to kill me. All black men should have got up no matter what, and they should have met up with her and they should have tore their masses up. Now that's just how I remember it. But I'm trying to get to understand the, the younger, you know, the youth and all that, because I get told all the time, they have to shut me down. Now I'm a line news talker. <laughs> they have to say, I'm gonna put you on mute because I go off on people, I, just like you. And I tell them constantly, y'all, well, I'm gonna say for one, women, and I say it all the time, women, we can make a man and we can break a man, okay? And that's from birth and up. But do not lay down with nobody you can't see yourself with long haul. I mean, that's just it. And I told everybody, I've only been with three people at my old age. And that's because they had to earn it. You know what I mean? And I have the respect that I am deserved. And that is the thing that I want all of our women to do because we are deserving of respect. And now back to you, Judge. I've been trying to get in contact with you. My husband wanted to interview you. 
and you never got back in contact with me. Well, hey, Kyle, has he gotten in touch with me? Directly? I, I, we, we've tried, we don't know any other way. We don't know no hey, way. Hey, here's the thing. Send me a DM. If you say send you a DM, and I did, I might get and it, but I get it. I get hundreds of these things. So I've got this literally 75, 80 of these things to go through. And I try so to. So if I send through. it right this second and I'll put my secret sister on it, you should know it's me. Right? Okay. Yeah, all right. Do that. Uh, now I'll send I'll, it through. I'll get you hooked up so you can get with me. But okay. I see your point. Okay. You get my point. Like, that's frustrating. Well, why don't you go through the moderator here? He can yeah, why don't you go c contact uh, Ask Ray, because that's his cousin, and you you'll be best advised to go ahead and go through Ray's super right. sister. And yeah, you can get it done that way. Ray, you mean to tell me you've been sitting here? He's so quiet. Ray. Yes, ma'am. You come off that mic. Ain't no yes, ma'am. Now, you know that I've needed some help and you know you could have had your cousin up here judge these are the, it's a hard crowd cuz well, yeah, right. you about to get it now yeah, yeah I, I, they, I said these that, are some said youth that, that don't want to listen to our asses now ray tell me your cousin ain't said everything pretty much i said but i said it as a woman okay women let me tell you what I always say men should give guidance and women should give advice. If yeah, but when these men woman, are bitches. If you're a wise <laughs> man and you've got a wise woman, you'll listen to her. You don't always have to do what she says, but consider and weigh what she has to put on the table. Same but thing guess what? I have around. age over them, Judge. I I have a husband, and I am beneath my husband, and I try to teach them the way I've had um, the family structure on. I was trying to teach them how we should go about. We need a do-over. I don't care oh, what nobody yeah. say. Let me, let me break that down for you, how mm -hmm. we got where we are. In the 1960s, toward the end, color television was kicking the movie industry in the behind. All right? Every Thursday and every Sunday in every theater in America, you got two new movies and a bunch of cartoons. Don't care how popular the movie was, how big a flop it was, it would always go from Sunday to Thursday, Thursday to Sunday. So you get four in a week. Color television was running the movie industry out of business. Okay. Some new people got involved in it. They had a bright idea. Instead of paying 50 cents so somebody could walk in any place while these movies were running for 50 cents as an adult. Let's charge them a buck and a quarter, buck and a half. Now, back when they did that, that's the equivalent of charging $45 for, for a movie. Now, that was one thing. The next thing was there is an untapped market that we can get into that would be glad to pay for movies because they are starved for movies about them, black folks. But let's not give the movies about the black businessman, the black soldier, the black scientist, the black man or woman who's trying to make a family work. Let's give them the lowest common denominator because they said so many of the black folk that we would want to go after don't understand that. So let's go for the lowest common denominator, the drug dealer, the thief, the pimp the et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you got Max Julian playing Goldie. You got uh, Pam Greer and Foxy Brown. You got uh, Fred the Hammer Williams playing Black Caesar. And you got Rod O'Neill playing Superfly. And that changed the dynamic because it was glorification of dysfunction. Now, who got in these positions? And that's the key. 
Somewhere around 1966, these people started coming out of the closets, hip, and they started speaking up on college and university campuses all over America and in other places. You had lesbians who hated men. You had the feminists who hated that they were not men. You had the beta slash soy boy, weak guys that hated that they were not strong men. You had the gay crowd that hated that they were not normal men. And they got to getting up together and they gravitated to certain things that let them get into the entertainment industry. Like, you know, you get that crowd going into interior decorating and hairdressing and all this other stuff. Okay. Well, they did. And starting with all of that stuff, they put this dysfunction in the mind of youth, minds of youth, particularly our youth, because we now had something to go see. And for the last century and a quarter, 125 years, kids all over the world have gotten ideas on what's appropriate by looking at movies. So we saved Hollywood, but we damned ourselves by saying this is all right. And we got the rap culture developed about 1980. And most folk are not old enough to understand what that's about because they weren't even born. But rap, essentially, is poetry to music. And we had that going back with Satchmo Armstrong back to the 20s. That's what he did. He played the trumpet and rap. Late 1960s, we had uh, Gil Scott Heron and his group. And they had some telling political and social rap. And then we started getting into that rap thing that I remember started out in New York where they would have block parties and house party, apartment parties. And there would be these guys that would be hired as DJs and they would have commentary as they spun records and they'd have these contests outside on who has the best commentary slash rap that went along with the music they were playing and they would award cash prizes. It moved on, but it hasn't changed much since 1980 because of something else going on all over the world. The Western world was suffering. The young boys and young men were suffering because they weren't seeing manhood. So one of the sales pitches for the rap that was developing was pretty babe, half-dressed, bouncing around on stage, gyrating while somebody was posturing about it. He was all this and that, brag rap, we used to call it. And he had all of the fine babes and the cigars and the champagnes and the and champagne and the limo uh, under his control. And it started selling in Tokyo, Berlin, Rome, uh, hell, soon enough in Moscow, and Sydney, Australia, you name it. And it is stagnated for 40 some years because it sells well and the people that finance the stuff don't want to hear anybody coming up with any change. And I know some rap stars personally and they said, Judge, you know, we try, man, but we got to sneak it in, man. You know, like we got to disguise it. I said, no, you know, brother, you got to stop disguising it. You have to let it hang out and rip. But man, we came and look, man, you ain't never had a real job. I understand your reluctance, but man, some of us are willing to have the courage to risk the job for doing right. You got to go there, but some of them won't. So we are where we are. And you know what bothers me about rap? It's not so much what it is. It's this fact. You go in a place, a club, and everybody in there from 22 to 70 is doing the same dance to the same music if they're physically fit. And some of the 23-year-olds in there are too big to move around and be fit. And some of the 70-year-olds are thin enough to be fit. So it bothers me because 
I didn't dance the same stuff my parents did. They didn't understand what I was doing, let alone what my grandparents were up to on a dance floor and vice versa. But now everybody's done it because there's been no change in 40 years fundamentally. And that's a bad thing too. So what are we doing to ourselves? Where are we going? And then when you get this gangster thug rap, what you see up on that screen ain't even really masculinity. What you're looking at is somebody that's got street cred who is ideating on what went in his head at nine years old listening to his 12-year-old aunt, favorite aunt. And see, you look at the babes and the women all going, oh, man, these uh, sexual fantasies that these males have. It's not a sexual fantasy. What you're looking at is the, the rapper's mama, aunts, their friend girls, and his grandmama. And 25 years ago, you went down into projects and walked around in the summer and on the back stoop, you see grandmama, aunties, and mamas out there in the booty shorts and little halters with a 40 ounce in one hand and a cigarette in the other trying to get laid. And calling all the kids the N word and dogs and everything else. And that was because the grandmama was there when she was a kid. Her mama, back somewhere in 1972 or three, was calling all the kids running in and out of the kitchen in the projects those nasty names. See, and it's not good and it's not masculine what you're looking at. So we have to do a whole lot of revision. Look at P-Valley. Anybody watch P-Valley? You know, I've never seen that show before. I've heard of it, but I've no, never I seen it. I don't know that show. Uh -huh. P-Valley stands for Pussy yeah. Valley. The manager of the club is a flamer. And all these guys coming in there trying to get hid from the girls or get laid or make a rendezvous later. The manager of the club, the male, is giving up more head than the girls are promising to the boys. All right? And they got this fantasy about what the girls are about. Uh, I used to represent a whole lot of pimps and hoes and dancers before I got out of that business 30-some years ago. They paid the rent. I know them. And a lot of that stuff's fake. First off, when you're talking about dancers, I was on retainer to several strip clubs in the Memphis area. First off, you get 100 strippers, 95 of them are straight up lesbians. Three of them are bisexual and two of them are straight. The two of them that are straight up and they're dancing naked and sweaty all night long with guys around, they give it up for free. The rest of the 98 out of the 100 are selling it. And they don't want the guys. They're trying to work. They ain't about to give none up. They're giving the money away to their girlfriends. Uh, there's this myth. Yeah, all these dancers working hard and they're giving their money away to do. No, they're not. Mm -hmm, friend girls. I remember one time 35 years ago, I decided to help them out. They were paying twenty nine ninety five a night the Motel 6 going broke. So I went around and made some arrangements for them where I would get a special weekly rate for them. Hell, it wasn't but like 50-something, 60-something a week, and they were paying twenty nine ninety five a night. And I had the clubs pay part of their money to me, and I put it in an escrow account. One woman got mad at me. I didn't know what for. I said, I'm not cheating. She said, I ain't trying to cheat me. You trying to work me, get me all hooked up and dependent. So what the devil are you talking about? Well, the amount of money that she had put away in six weeks, she didn't believe she had. She, I think it was 14000 some dollars. Hell, she was pretty. She could make four, five, six thousand a night on the 1st and the 15th from these servicemen, these sailors out here at Millington. She didn't know what she's bringing it in because she was buying drugs and whatever else her girlfriend wanted. So, I mean, it's all kinds of mythology and sickness. So I've had the point I'm making is, Judge, because you talked to my granddaughter 
well, what's the problem? Talk to her. Wait a minute. You you want to be like who on P Valley? Oh, hell no. And see, they're glorifying that. That's something to aspire to. What is going on here? And by the way, I mean, women, I've got women doctors and dentists and lawyers and all of that, but it's like, guys, I don't care what you're doing. If you ain't into the business of providing and protecting, you ain't shit. Women, if you ain't into the business of being effective mothers as an avocation in addition to all or whatever else you think you want, you ain't either. So we need to get back to making it all right to be a mother instead of as a, you know, just a qualification thing. You know, I got a diploma. I got a kid. You know, that's like dudes running around. Yeah, man, I got 17 outside children, man. Well, that means your man is in question. Cause you can't support any of them. So what's the matter? You think you gay, man? Cause you got 18, 19 outside children. That just means you pumped out, dude. Inside your head. Who are you supporting? So I have a second part of my question. Hold on one second. I just one wanted second. to know. Uh, Look, I just, oh, it's just yes. quick. I just wanted to know if you as a elder, you know, judge and a warrior, how would you um, say, uh, uh, woman should go about um teaching these youths or what how should i come at them so that they could listen or they want to listen uh that's already out there it's been out there for thousands of years just read up read go to the library pull out some books on parenting the old ones that have faded and crinkled not this stuff from Spock on. Shepard, I see you um you got your hand up. So I go ahead and I'll let you um ask the judge a question real quick. Yes sir. Peace and blessings, Judge. Thank you, John. Yes sir. So um in a lot of cities that, that I've worked, there's an organized ring of lawyers who specialize in evicting black tenants from public housing, Section 8, and from regular commercial or real estate. And they get their cases all called at once on a docket by judges. And they also uh, make money from the eviction process itself. And along with the sheriff department in the city that does the actual physical evictions. In your uh, career, can you speak to um, this aspect of um, dispossession of, of black people and the commercialization of that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Like I said earlier, there are a lot of black people that are landlords now, and they don't want to be in the position of some of their tenants. So they need their properties and they need rental monies. So you have to consider that. The other thing is, Public housing, an eviction from public housing. I understand people are down and out. However, the best way to handle that, if you have the time and the inclination and the drive, is to get yourself in a situation where you don't need that anymore. Another point is I'm in a position to know a lot of people, and I have counseled folks nieces, nephews, grandchildren, and children. And some of the things I've heard aren't very cool. Like, no, you can't count on staying here without paying somebody. And sooner or later, this is going to hit the fan and this COVID-19 thing is going to blow over a bit and then they're going to come after you. So there's always this thing in American law you can't get away with. We usually see, and what you're talking about is called the FED, Forcible Entry and Detainer Action. Somebody owns the property rights to a premises. Somebody rents the premises. Somebody is counting on the income from the premises to support themselves or enrich themselves. Somebody else who's down and out is there. And if they don't pay, 
then at some point that line is crossed and the landlord is behind that same kind of rock, maybe a bigger rock. But most people aren't really that much into charity, so it would be a matter of uh, I'd rather you suffer than me. So you got to go so I can rent this property out to somebody else. And I might suggest that some of the preachers driving the Bentleys and the Rolls and the Mercedes and the such like and buying their wise fur coats that they do something to turn their churches and pulpits into charitable institutions rather than sources of enrichment that might help. We might also do something about having our elected officials set up programs so that people can get vocational training and further their education so they can get to a position where they can be viable in the job market. And it's going to get worse because you've got that open southern border and a whole lot of people are coming in that don't mind working hard for very little. Thank you very much for answering the question. Um, Judge, uh, just to follow up, do you recognize that that there is a predatory system that preys on the black community in the judicial system as far as, you know, renters and, and that? Do you recognize that at all? And I'd also like to just draw your attention to a case that was, I think it was in VA, where uh, one of the first African-American judges uh, went against the the predatory uh, institution of of eviction, and he almost got disbarred for even trying to uh, mitigate the uh, disposition of black people you know, across America. So, do you recognize that there is an issue there, or have yeah, you there, there, is an issue. there is an issue to a degree. Yes, there is an issue, but you see, it's not a simple thing with small areas you can get. It's a big picture. See, when you start talking about the landlord and the tenant situation, you you have a lot of very ancient history behind it. I mean, literally Robin Hood, Sheriff of Nottingham, King of England. You've got the despicable thing with the plantation owner, but you've got the farmer, you've got the homesteader, you've got all kinds of things. And what happens is age. See, a lot of people that I know that were saying what you were saying and the questions you're asking 50 years ago have persevered in life, and now they're doing generational wealth things, passing what they put together onto their grandchildren. And now they're very worried about the apartment buildings that they acquired or the rental properties that they acquired being lost. So it's a matter of perspective. And one thing I've noted over the last half century is that perspective changes. Somebody is on the out, doesn't have a pot to pee in, but they persevere and prosper in life, and now they do. So their interests change. And a person that 50 years ago was concerned about the tenant is now very much more concerned about the landlord. So it's a big picture. And the way to deal with this is to increase the prosperity level for everybody and also understand that there are rules that even if they are against you, in 2022 and 2046 they may be very much for you it's not a simple matter thank you thank you very much for answering my questions i appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and you have a great evening all right sir Judge, we, we're not going to hold you up. Uh, I know you've had a long day, Judge, and I appreciate you coming into the space. And uh, I definitely um, definitely appreciate you coming in here and just sharing some knowledge with us. So we, I know you've been, had a long day. I appreciate you coming in. Like I said, it's been a while since we had you in the news over the space. So 
I just want to thank you for coming in, and I want to thank everybody who also came in to uh, hear the judge drop some uh, jewels, as always. So we definitely appreciate you coming up into the space. I also want to thank Brother McCoo and William for your contribution on Cash App. Uh, we got the real Dana in the actual space as well, too. She has a YouTube channel, so if you guys get a chance, please go ahead and, and follow her. Uh, judge, I, I know you want to give a shout-out to your, your barbecue company that you got. Um, you want to go ahead and, and give a quick shout-out to that real quick? Oh, yeah. The other thing I'm doing aside from dealing with service is selling sauce. Some of the best barbecue sauce you'll be able to get. And there's some people on here hyped to say, by the way, she and I hung out this weekend up in New Jersey. And that was a hell of a party. She took me to where her friend's uh, family put it on. But the barbecue sauce is Judge Joe Brown, JJB, barbecue, BBQ. So that's JJB bbq.com and order yourself some. We will have chicken links, smoked raw, hot, mild, and spices available, I think this week actually, in addition, and a few other things, and it should be on your shelf. But you can order it. If you order the three pack, it's probably the best deal because, hell, the shipping is almost as much as a bottle of the sauce if you just get the one. But check it out, JJB23 for Mayor of Memphis, Tennessee, and JJBBBQ.com for sauce. So service and sauce, go for it. You'll enjoy it. It's time to turn things around. And by the way, the next time we ought to talk about community control of the police, not oversight. We need to talk about civilian control of the police like we have with the American military establishment. There's a civilian commander-in-chief to president. That could be the mayor. We have a civilian secretary of defense. We need a director of police, a secretary of police. We've got a civilian secretary of the Army, Navy, Air Force, etc. We need civilian sub-chiefs over homicide, uniform, patrol, traffic, sex crimes, burglary, juvenile matters. We need all of that. So we don't need to rely upon civilian review boards, which are ineffective. We need civilian control. We need some things done about normalizing relationships between the police department and the citizenry. See, here's a secret that you need to be well aware of. Police are a one-one representation of the political realities in an area. If the police treat you like crap, that means your status politically in the area is crap. If you are valuable as a political entity or representative of a political body, you are treated importantly. And by the way, that's usually why the sheriff's department does better than the police departments do is because the sheriff being elected is very much directly responsive to the police. And even in places that don't look good, they will provide community services to keep getting elected to those offices. So that's just an additional something for a later occasion. All right, Ray, Ray, I know you and DJ want to ask the judge something before we close it out. So go ahead and uh, ask the question, uh, Ray. Say, uh, get in the Jumbotron, Judge Joe, uh, barbecue sauce is right there in the Jumbotron. You can click the link and go ahead and order the sauce, y'all. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I, I already got some. I don't know if you see it because if you've seen the Jumbotron, I already ordered some of your sauce. And I can honestly say it was definitely some of the best I've had in a long, long time. <coughs> before I yield the mic, because uh, if you wouldn't mind, I saw that there was a guy named Tim. He's been on hold for a while. I think he has a question to ask you before we uh, close out the space, if you have time. Uh, I have time. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Okay. 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 Who is, where is Tim at? I don't see it, Tim. Oh, I, I said I'm disconnecting now. Because uh, before Secret Sister came on, he's been trying to get on. I don't know if he's having connection issues or what. But I want to at least let him, you know, give everybody a fair shot to ask, you know, to ask their question. Yeah, it like he's having connection issues. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, he was just in for a second, and I don't know what happened. So uh, I don't want to. DJ, you got something hey, you want to try? Yeah, I'm trying to bring the brother up. Uh, no, nothing. You know, we agree to agree. Appreciate you, uh, Judge Joe, for coming through again. You're always blessing us with the uh, the fire information and, 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 the, and the good laugh for sure. Okay. Yeah. Judge, I'm gonna have to go. I, I'm gonna have to go ahead and get some of that barbecue sauce because I'm used to getting that uh, what is it, a sweet baby rays or whatever. So I need to go ahead and try your sauce as well too. Uh you'll like it better. I'd like it better, is yeah. That I, the I only need one to... you have. Uh, we have, are going to have in the month, in addition to the regular, the OG and the hot. And if anybody's listening is in Los Angeles, if you want to taste the stuff cooked on something, go to 79th and Western down in the hood to D's original takeout grill. It's right on the corner. It's a cat corner across from the church. So it's D's as in Delta original takeout grill. That's pork, beef, chicken, turkey, goat and lamb it's good stuff and i was gonna say and i'm gonna pass it the news one last thing we definitely appreciate you coming in and spending time to talk to all of you you're very well respected obviously you got a bunch of people in here that will still want to hear your opinion and value you so if you could please please come back like i said we love you we wish you the best us thank you for coming okay thanks cuz Keep on doing what you're doing, everybody. Be safe and survive those streets. And meanwhile, when I talk about manhood being necessary, we had more manhood, we'd have safer streets. Absolutely, Judge. And once again, I, I definitely I appreciate having you in the space. I know you're very busy, so I know you can't always uh, DM or text back or whatever. So I'm just glad to have you in the space again tonight. And hopefully we can get you in at least once a month so you can go ahead and share because, you know, news holder, we got a ton of content and whatnot. So there's so many news articles and stories that I, you know, I like to just get your opinion on and whatnot. So definitely, are you saying that civilian control of police? We can actually make that a, a space as well, too. So I definitely love to have you back. All right, sir. We can do this now. Hi, Byron. Got to go. This has been Judge Joe. Call me when you can since I'm the one that ran. I'm out of here. Yes, sir. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and close the space out. You guys check us out tomorrow. We'll be back 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Monday through Thursday as always, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Appreciate everybody who came in, all of the uh, co-hosts, the speakers, the listeners, and everybody who tweeted out the space. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, and y'all have a good one. Peace.